one of our three deceivers once hugged a celebrity on stage. You can tell us who you think it is by voting along in the chat. Let's find out who's telling the truth and who is a chump. We're back! Welcome, 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 welcome to Chump, everybody. The Rooster Teeth Game Show, all about lying and deception. I'm your host, Jeremy Dooley, and we are back for season four. If you want to call it that. I mean, you know what? Let's go for it. It's season four. It's the on-the-spot thing. We'll, we'll have 30 eventually. Uh, but <laughs> it is time to introduce... Ah, there's a, <laughs> this is a, that's a little hint at who's here. Uh, it is time to introduce our three deceivers for today's show, starting with deceiver number one, Connor McGrath. Hello. It's true. Hello. I have a toothache. The, the rumors are true. <laughs> Let's move on to deceiver number two, <laughs> Zach Niblick. Hey. Hey. Everyone. Hey. And deceiver number three, you all know him and love him. It's John Reisinger. Oh, yeah, ha, ha. yeah, okay. Oh, look at that. The, Give me the canned applause. Me. I deserve that. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh, <laughs> now, only uh, two people can sort out whether or not they're lying or telling the truth. The first being today's contestant, Chris Kokinos. Hey! Oh, oh. I feel like I gotta go to the dab from there. I'm so happy to be here. You're and you're standing right now, right? You're not. Are you not in the chair right now? You you at a standing I'm, desk? Oh man, the, that's the most wow. verbal contestant we've had yet. <laughs> I can yeah. see that. That's so like, aggressive. That's aggressive. Here, I don't no, need no, this no, kind no, of energy being brought at me. Connor, sit down. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to show off my legs. <laughs> we need twin frame. <laughs> They're nice legs, Connor. And, uh, okay. The other person sorting out the lies uh, from the truth is you, the audience, playing along at home by using hashtags within the chat. And just to remind you, because this is the first episode of another season, uh, you can change your votes at any point during a game if someone convinces you otherwise. But doing the same person over and over isn't going to increase the number of votes. So don't spam the same name. You can just change your one vote to whoever you think is telling the truth. Uh, all right. Are you guys ready to kick things off? Love it. Let's yes. go. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Let me let me kick Let's something. Go kick. Okay. Let's start with a game called What's in Your House. Oh my. In this game, our three deceivers will all be describing an item within their house. However, only one of them is telling the truth. The other two are making up items that do not exist. I will get a one sentence description from all three of them. Chris. We'll then question each of them about this item to get more details about it. Uh, up to my discretion, I'll tell Chris when to move on to the next person. And when questioning is done, he just has to tell me who has the real item. And audience, you are voting in the chat using the hashtags, hashtag Connor, hashtag Zach, hashtag John, on who actually has the item. So without further ado, let's get that one sentence description of all the items, starting with Connor, Connor, what is in your house? I have a series of smartphones in frames. Series of smartphones in frames. Zach, what is in your house? I have a life-sized Annabelle doll. A life-sized <laughs> Annabelle doll. <laughs> like from, from uh, a horror and... movie? <laughs> You're not allowed to say that <laughs> without <laughs> smiling, okay? Sorry, you yeah, have sorry. to let us know. Sorry. Well, they give you and one when you John, move to LA. <laughs> uh, John, what is in your house? I have a gold human skull. A gold human skull. All right, so those are the three items in question. Chris, it's up to you who you want to start with. So who do you want to question first? Oh God, uh, I'm gonna start with I'm gonna start with John. All right, up, so Chris? With John with the uh, gold human skull. So whenever you're ready, begin your questioning, and I'll tell you when to move on. John, not a, you're not allowed to lie to me, okay? Here we go. Uh, I, I'm terrible at no. lying. This is just going to go <laughs> terribly. John, uh, where did you procure this skull from? Funny enough, a yard sale. Okay. Is it a real you skull? You find good it... things when people are getting rid of their houses. 
Yeah, fair enough. John, I hate to say it, but you're cursed, dude. That's that's some R.L. Stein. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's some wild shit. Uh, is it a human skull? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's easy enough. You did, I'd you be did cool if I that. Yeah, <laughs> gold human skull. But I appreciate no. you checking on my facts. I'm just checking. Yeah, I want to make sure. Is it is it real or is it fake? What what's uh what's the the deal with that? <laughs> I can't tell because it's gold plated. I hope Boring. it's real because that's even cooler. I'm down for the curse. I've 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 been trying to get myself haunted or cursed. I have not been able to do it yet. So this was like step five of trying to do that. Oh God! <laughs> you defile the it, grave site. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't. I have no. I have no further questions, Your Honor. I can't think of okay. anything. Okay. Like <laughs> I have no further questions. Gold plated human skull. <laughs> Uh, all right. I don't know why uh, I started with John. I that that was just I'm I've got some concerns for you, man. Yeah, uh, get that out of the way. All right, so Connor, Zach, who do you want to go to next? Let's go to Connor. All right, That's going me. to Connor. A series of <laughs> smartphones and frames. Whenever you're ready, begin your questioning. Okay. Doesn't Connor, everyone have that what, in their house? What? No. Sorry, go, go. I, I had to check. I had to make sure. No, I don't. I don't have them in my house. Uh, talk to me. Talk to me about these smartphones. What kind of smartphones are they? It is an iPhone, uh, an HTC phone, an LG, and a Google Nexus. Which Google Nexus? Oh, uh, five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why? Why? That sounded why bad. Collect, that sounded... Why? Why are you collecting uh, number? Smart... Number. Give me a number. <laughs> Any number. What? Uh, what's the? What's your? What's your uh, fascination with smartphones? Uh, <laughs> As opposed to everyone who hates them. I <laughs> hate smartphones. I only use flip phones. Uh, they were all a gift. Well, no, they weren't all gifts. That's a silly thing to say. I guess I bought two of them. No, I bought one of them myself. I don't know. I just think it's interesting, you know, when they're when they're dead, the screens are just a reflection of the world that we once used them in. That's, beautiful. That's so beautiful. I'm snapping. I'm snapping because that was really nice. That was good. Thank, thank How, you. you thank you. When, Finally, when some you goddamn say, recognition. When you say that they're dead, <clears throat> how do they die? What's what's the problem with them? Are they can you still use them? Are they completely shattered? What's what's up with that? No, they're not shattered. I think you could plug them in and get them to work. Okay. The battery's dead. Got mm. it. Probably, <laughs> yeah. I see. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, we're going to move on to... And uh, that leaves us with the life-sized Annabelle doll from Zach. Uh, and I can't help but notice, speaking of framed objects, is that a framed sock behind you, Zach? That is a framed sock. Yes, <laughs> it is a it is a it is a gift. It is it is my cat's face uh, uh, printed on a sock, custom oh made. God. So and I had that framed sock lying around you. Yeah, when yeah. You, in uh, case my feet get super of cold, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I bring that shadow box with me everywhere and a tiny little hammer. Yeah. All right, life-size animal doll. <laughs> Begin your question whenever you're ready. I think I've been avoiding this because I'm horrified to hear the answers. Zach, why do you have a life-size Annabelle doll? Uh, I I procured it from an old place of work. <laughs> okay, that's I thought you were like an old old store that's an no old, longer. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> uh, are we talking about the Annabelle like the horror doll? I just make sure I got that. Yes, right. yes, the of the Conjuring cinematic universe. Oh, Patrick boy. Wilson's okay. friend. Why? Why do you still have it? Is the, I like to think we're all Patrick question. Wilson's friend. <laughs> like, Craig, like Craig Fox, damn you! <laughs> Wait, repeat your question. I couldn't hear the end. Why? Of it. Why do you? Why do you still have this doll? Uh, it was a a prop used for a, a very specific shoot that happened once, uh, and then it was never needed again, and kind of just was collecting dust. And then I had the opportunity to to take it. I'm not sure how many people were aware that I did, but it seemed like it was okay to do. <laughs> well, they they are they are all watching the stream, so they all know now that you have that. 
<laughs> or they all saw the doll vanished and were like, oh my god! Or that. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't slept a, we a wink yeah. since. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll give you one more question if you have any, or you can end it there. No, no, that's good. No, nope. that's good. <laughs> this is no. I don't want to know anymore. Yeah. All right, so um, that is all of your questions, Chris. So before we get your final answer on who you think actually has the item, uh, audience, okay. get your last votes in right now. You can still change if uh, someone convinced you or unconvinced you, I guess. Um, so before we get your final answer, Chris, is there anyone you're just full on not believing or anyone you're kind of floating between? Uh, what are you feeling? Um, I don't... John's John's gold skull thing has kind of got me a little shooketh at the moment. So I'm going to say probably no, just because it's that's a wild thing to have. The mm -hmm. the framed the, the framed smartphones doesn't seem too wild and crazy because I literally I still have like three of my old iPhones in my house somewhere. Um, I wouldn't frame them, but, you know, it's it could be art if you wanted to like if you had a specific frame or if you're like into that kind of style I of art. I think I'd be dunked on. <laughs> <laughs> but respectfully, uh, respectfully, yeah, 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 as, as respectfully yeah. as I can. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's kind of I'm like waffling between those two, probably being less true. The Annabelle thing is very creepy, very worrying. But for some strange reason, now that I know that he has a sock in a shadow box, <laughs> that's true. This made it seem more likely <laughs> it seems a little more likely. i didn't even think yeah. to address my immediate oh. surroundings <laughs> yeah. all right before we get uh your final answer audience you are now locked in thank you very much for voting first game of season four chris and now it is to you uh who do you think has the actual item in their home it's funny because i look i'm looking at john john looks like he's about to go get up and hold the skull and just be like you fool You've, cho you've chosen the wrong well, the, person. The person who Alas, has the item is Chris. going to reveal it in front of you. Oh, so they will, uh, they will have I don't the know item. If, I don't want to guess that Zach has this thing because I don't want to see it if he does. Uh, okay, <laughs> I'm going to go with I'm going with Zach on the Annabelle doll. Is that your... Are you going to lock that in? I'm locking it in! Let's lock in Zach as having the item. And before we reveal... Let's see what the audience thought. Audience, who do you think had the actual item? Whoa! Whoa a tie wow. So not John. Right. <laughs> the gold-plated skull takes the win there for the audience. Um, so the audience is going with John. Chris is going with Zach. Deceivers, I'm going to count down from three, and then I'm going to say reveal and on reveal. Uh, Please hold up the actual item. Three, two, one, reveal. He's got a mirror to show <laughs> smartphones hanging on the wall. Whoa! There it is. <laughs> Look at that. It is very, it is really that is artful. Awesome. That is, see, yeah. that's <laughs> very a lot of primary colors. They do reflect and they would work if charged. And to be specific, it's an iPhone 4, it's an HTC One M8, an LG G5, and a Google Nexus 5. Dang it! I didn't you want to sound like a razor too phone much. at some point. That up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, you that was good, very yeah. well done. You did a great job. Yeah, you played that really well. well <laughs> Which, thank uh, you. so because uh, Connor was telling the truth, uh, that means that the deceivers actually get two points for that round for fooling both the contestant and the audience. God. Well, they're very well done. We'll get them again, audience. Thank we'll you very much. Time. <laughs> we'll we'll get be of service. Time. We'll get you next this time. This makes me feel dirty. Chris, like, <laughs> joining forces with the audience to try to get that done. We're, We're in this like, together. Uh, and if I go down, you go uh, down. <laughs> Sean, I did not think people were going to go for that golden skull, and they really did. <laughs> the yeah, they really. They latched on the a gold plated I mean, skull. There, there's, there's some truth behind it in that I have similar items, and I have actively tried to buy things to get myself haunted. Nothing's worked, so. Sure, Ugh. sure. Why the hell not? This episode of Chump is brought to you by Bespoke Post. This fall, as you get back into the swing of things, Bespoke Post has brand new seasonal Box of Awesome collections for guys, guaranteed to upgrade your life. 
whether it's gear to upgrade your autumn craft beers mm. or cozy threads for when the temperature dips. Bespoke Post only sends guys the best stuff every month. No matter what you're into, Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel at any time. Each box costs only 45 bucks, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. I've mentioned it before, and I'll mention it again. I got a box of awesome with a Damascus steel blade inside of it. It was really, really high quality. I take it with me when I go outdoors, when I go camping. It's super useful, and uh, just all of their items are very high quality. You can get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code CHUMP at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code CHUMP, for 20% off your first box. Thank you, Bespoke Post. Yeah, no, All right, that you, means man. we're going to move on. There's a lot of points up for grabs in this next game, though, and this is Pushing oh. the Envelope. So in this game, both the deceivers and the contestant have a chance to earn two points. The audience also has a chance to earn two points. So there's a lot on the line here. I have three true facts about our deceivers in these envelopes. I, I forgot <laughs> to pick up some. So these are some adorable. pieces of paper with lines on them. Uh, and I will shuffle up the three true facts and then redistribute them to our deceivers. So they could get their fact. They could get someone else's. Uh, if they get their own, they're going to be answering Chris's questions truthfully. If they get someone else's, they're lying to try to make Chris believe that fact is about them. And Chris, you're going to get 60 seconds to question each person. Uh, audience, okay. we'll explain how you work in just a second after we read the facts, starting with Connor. The true fact about Connor. <laughs> they hugged a celebrity on stage at their college graduation. Hugged a celebrity on stage at their college graduation. I haven't washed my hands well, true since. Story. That's unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> the true story about Zach. A hillbilly once followed him home. The true story about Zach. And the true story about John. Despite not being Jewish, John <laughs> once founded a Jewish a cappella group. So there oh, we muscle. go. <laughs> that is the, uh, those are the yeah, true cub. stories <laughs> that we have there. So uh, those all are, those are all true stories. Who they're about, we don't know. Audience, you are voting on who was actually followed home by a hillbilly. So uh, Zach is claiming that this story is about him, but is the story about Connor? Is it about Zach? Is it about John? Uh, you are voting in the chat on that so chris you get 60 seconds to question each person uh who do you want to start with uh i have so many questions for john i don't know how to verbalize them yet so i'm gonna go to connor first <laughs> just let that ruminate okay. yeah i gotta let that ruminate for a while yeah Simmer on that so one. i'm gonna go to, to the connor, reigning uh, camp yeah so uh Rated. they hugged a celebrity on stage at their college graduation okay so you get 60 seconds on the clock are you ready uh, all right, <laughs> 60 seconds, ready, get set, go. Cutter, what college did you go to? I went to Temple University in Philadelphia. And who was the celebrity? So this was sort of a technicality answer. It was a local <laughs> celebrity who does a series of local commercials and it was for the broadcast school graduation. So not like someone you'd actually know, but I needed to give a clever, interesting answer. Uh, did, uh, what was their involvement with the school? So they were a big donor. There was like a, a wing named after them in the, so the Annenberg building, and then it was the Barbera wing because it was Frank Barbera. He had gone there in the seventies. And then he had this whole slew of dealerships. If, you know, if at least for where I grew up, his commercials were on all the time. So definitely a big deal, which is funny because actually famous people went out of that school. They dropped out, but Tim and Eric did go there. Oh, oh my. Okay. That's a lot of information to process. Um, were they nice? 
I honestly could not tell, but they were soft. <laughs> that is a good hugger. Well, okay. That's what I remember yeah. the most about people. <laughs> they, were <laughs> soft. they were soft. They were soft. Their most scale rating. <laughs> oh, God. All right. There are your questions for Connor. Who would you like to go to next? Let's go down the line right over to Zach. All right, going over to Zach. So audience pay extra close attention to this one. This is the story you're voting on. Uh, once followed home by a hillbilly. 60 seconds are going on the clock. Ready, get set, go. Uh, how did you know it was a hillbilly? Uh, because I was still living in Tennessee at the time, and it is very apparent. Uh, okay, and they followed you home. Were they driving, walking? What, were, what was the deal there? They were driving. They were driving. Uh, yeah. Did, did they ever get out of their vehicle? Yes. <laughs> what happened next? <laughs> Tried to sell me on a lawn mowing service. <laughs> I know, I know. You gotta make that buck somehow. Don't laugh at it. Okay. Oh, I can't that help it. Good. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, when was this? 2009? Yeah, 2009. Hmm. Oh, I don't know where to go from here. Um, yeah. Did you did you hmm. get the lawn mowing service? Oh, that's a good I question. told him I, I took his I took his information down and said I would call him back. <laughs> I don't know why, but I feel like I assumed that was your immediate answer. Anytime you sound like, like me when I'm getting hit on by guys at gay bars. Thank you. Let me get your card. Meanwhile, his his business uh, card just says the gutter between two and six a.m. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if it's efficient. Ask for Jebediah. <laughs> Those are my uh, All right. That leaves, uh, I guess, the moment we've all been waiting for. Uh, John, so uh, once founded a Jewish a cappella group, um, and then it says, I am not Jewish. So, <laughs> uh, whenever you have 60 seconds on the clock, ready, get set, go. All right, John. Tell me about your vocal range. Oh, I mean, not as good as it was at the time. A, a lot of uh, uh, damage to my vocal cords has made it so I can't sing as well. But I've grown up in a very musically inclined family. Everybody in my family is musically inclined. Were you? Where did you fall in the realm of the scales in terms of your vocals? The scales? Can I can, like? Yeah. Can I sing were scales? You... No, were you were you a baritone, soprano, alto? Oh yeah, bar baritone, baritone. Okay. Mm, and how did this happen? With how did okay? How did it become this Jewish acapella group? How did this? <laughs> I guess that's enough. the question. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I grew up in a very Christian family. In fact, my father's a pastor and our church was actually right next to a temple. And so we had a close relationship with that temple and my father being the music pastor of the church I was at, we had to make some sort of outreach agreement with the other church. And we ended up one of the uh, collaborative projects was a acapella group. So okay. that's all the time you have. I can tell you more. I saved the best question for last. Oh, I had to ask the technical Listen, questions That's all first. we got time for. <laughs> Kill the hey, if he's gonna, talk in scales. If he's gonna, if he's gonna eat up his time for like forty seconds asking if I have musical abilities, that's his prerogative. You know, hey, you want to know more about the? It's a good line of questioning. All yeah, right. yeah. I'm just, I'm playing the game here. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. I'm just asking. <laughs> okay. The uh, so the questioning is now done. Um, before we get final answers from anyone, uh, audience, this is your last chance to get your votes in. Chris, after hearing all of these stories, is there anyone you're outright not believing or anyone you think might be telling the truth? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, um, I'm not super buying John's story, um, though it does sound fun and funny. Uh, <laughs> I am very... very... Cutter and Zach, you're, both of your stories are too real and too believable oh so, sorry 
I told you. Sorry, I was born in the Bible Belt. Sorry. Before the game started, I I said you're not allowed to lie. You're not allowed to lie to me because we're friends, and that's friends don't. I would never lie to you, Chris. I'm very upset with one of you right now. (laughs) Well, we're about to find out who uh, very shortly. So, audience, uh, your votes are now locked in. Thank you very much. Two points on the line. So, good luck to you. And Chris. We're now going to go down the line, one deceiver at a time, and you're just going to tell me whether you think they're telling the truth or telling a lie. And uh, starting with Connor. So starting with Connor, uh, do you think that they were telling a truth or telling a lie? Hugged a celebrity on stage. That was very specific. There's a lot of specific things there. I'm going to go ahead and say it was the truth. You want to lock that in? It's a truth telling. Locking it in, Jeremy. Locking in Connor as telling truth moving on <laughs> moving on to zach who was followed home by a hillbilly uh telling the truth or telling a lie oh i guess i'm gonna go i have to go with my gut here too i'm just gonna take a wild guess and say this is also the truth all right we're going uh, you want to lock that in lock it in jeremy all right locking in uh that zach is telling the truth. Now, you've put yourself in a real position here. Uh, yeah, I know. Do you think John is telling the truth or telling a lie? Now, I, I mathematically... Know. I know. <laughs> I know. I know what I've done here, but I figured at least one of them is telling the truth, so I'm going to roll with that. Uh, I'm okay. going to say that John is telling a lie, which obviously negates one of my other answers, but... Oh, interesting play. All right, so you think that John is telling a lie. Do you want yeah. to lock that in? Locking it in, Jeremy. Lock in, John is telling a lie. I love that you went, I don't know about the other two. All I know is John's lying. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, so, at, um, there's no way for Chris to get two points out of this one, mathematically, mm-hmm. but you can still get one uh, mm-hmm. if you get two of them correct. You'll get a point. Uh, and if you get none of them correct, then deceivers are getting two points for that. Uh, yeah. And, you know, so on and so forth. Okay. Let's go down the line. Starting with Connor, who hugged a celebrity on stage. You thought they were telling the truth, and I can reveal that they were telling a lie. That was no! a lie. So that ah! is incorrect. That is unfortunately ah! incorrect. Which brings us to Zach, who was followed home by a hillbilly. Ah! You uh, rolled the dice and said that Zach was telling the truth, and I can reveal that Zach was telling a lie. That was also a lie. <laughs> so that is. Oh <laughs> now, my god! And the and the one thing you were sure of is that John was telling a lie. So you said John was telling a lie, and I can reveal that he was telling. A lie. You got that right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was you were right Threw about that. They were all lying. They were all lying. Um, oh, which means that the deceivers do get one point for that. And the audience thought that Zach was telling the truth. And of right? course, we now know that that is not correct. Uh, so the audience did not get any points for that. Um, the person who was followed home by a hillbilly is John Reisinger. Um <laughs> The person who hugged a celebrity on stage at their college graduation was Zach. And the person who founded a Jewish a cappella group despite not being Jewish was Connor. <laughs> hey! Hey! <laughs> oh, I, I, oh I, I got to uh, clear up something that chat's going, going crazy about. <laughs> One, yes, I was a baritone when I was younger. Y'all can fuck off with saying I'm not a baritone. And two... <laughs> Everything else about my story was completely true. I yeah. we, we had a church right next to a Jewish temple. We did stuff with them. My father's music pastor. Like that was all true. So <laughs> I love That's that awesome. you were like it sounded like you were like harboring a peace treaty. Like you were like, get out there, like make something happen. <laughs> yeah. Before we before we go to our, war with the other church. Or like uh our oh properties God. were just divided by one wall that had like a pedestrian opening and even like a car opening. But like we literally were like divided by a wall this like you know uh ch- ch- non non-denominational church in, in a jewish temple did so, they trade wow. you for a jewish boy like the new season of fargo <laughs> <laughs> for peace 
these uh i can't wait to hear the uh the truth behind these stories that will be in our post show chump change so uh first members make sure to tune in wow. to uh actually hear all of these stories in that post show um because we're gonna really jump in and, and and hear the facts here this episode of chump is brought to you by hbo max this halloween bring the big screen home with a family event film of the season the witches Warner Brothers Pictures and filmmaker Robert Zemeckis treat audiences to Roald Dahl's The Witches, premiering exclusively on HBO Max on October 22nd. Robert Zemeckis, the Oscar-winning director and master storyteller who gave us Forrest Gump, the Christmas classic The Polar Express, and the Back to the Future trilogy brings a fresh sense of humor along with warmth and the unexpected to what is sure to be a Halloween favorite. It's scary fun for the whole family. It's a wickedly funny and heartwarming tale about a young boy who stumbles upon a secret coven of witches and, with the help of his loving grandmother, must try to stop their evil plan to turn all the world's children into mice. Don't let that happen. They're going to stop it. The film is deliciously evil and fun in the irreverent spirit of Roald Dahl's other fan favorites. The heart of the film is the young boy, played by Jazir Bruno and voiced by Chris Rock, who becomes a brave but unlikely hero by teaming with his friends and grandma to stop the witch's evil plan. Watch The Witches on HBO Max at hbomax.com slash thewitches. Thanks again, HBO Max. And uh, so here's the thing. The, the Deceivers have, they have won. But on Chump, it's not about winning. It's about not losing it's about not being the chump so uh wait oh no are you putting so, me up against the audience now <laughs> chris and the audience are now totally against each other right now it is down to who will be the chump and we're gonna figure that out in our final game which is called high school dilemma uh, in this oh game my. we have one true high school related fact <laughs> about one of our three deceivers so you know could be a fact about them could be something from their yearbook a superlative anything like that i am uh going to give you that true fact chris then gets to question each deceiver for 60 seconds to try to figure out who this fact is really about an audience you are voting uh by using the same hashtags that you've been doing so far and the true fact about one of our three deceivers uh, is that one of them, uh, with their friends, formed a school-sponsored club so they could hang out and play video games. Made a school-sponsored club to hang out and play video games. Wait, uh, is this person me? Because I did that. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, I absolutely so, did that. Now, now, like you know the fact now. should be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Get into people. Yeah, exactly. You know the experience. process. Get into their minds. Uh, all right. So you get 60 seconds to question each person. Who do you want to start with? I feel betrayed by all of you. So I don't even I don't want to speak to any of you right now, but I guess I have to. So uh, since John, since John has kitty cam up, let's go to John first. OK, going to uh, John with the kitty cam. Uh, 60 seconds going on the clock. Ready, get set. Go. Okay. Uh, what was the what was the sponsored club that you formed? It was just it, it was just a computer club. Okay. And how big was it? I'd say probably like thirty kids. Wow, it's a lot of a lot of kids in a in a club. Yeah, and it was big. It was popular. Where, I mean, after where, all, we were just playing video games. Where? What? Uh, what kind of video games were you playing? What? What platforms? uh i mean it was it was a computer class so it was all just pc stuff we there, i don't think we could uh, get them to let us have consoles on campus what and what year was this or years i'm terrible at knowing what years but i can tell you it was like uh uh middle school middle school okay hmm. what games were you playing that would have been like Doom 2 era, maybe Unreal Tournament as well. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. All right, there's your first uh, line of questioning. Uh, who would you like to go to next? Let's go, Zach. Let's do the thing. All oh. right, let's do the thing. All right, <laughs> let's do the thing. All right, 60 seconds on the clock to question Zach. Ready, get set, go. Same to you, Zach. What was the club that you had formed? Uh, it was called SDAC, which stood for Super Duper Awesome Club. <laughs> Shut up. 
Okay. Uh, how many, how, how many people were in your SGAC? About 25 to 30, actually. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, sorry. I don't know. Anyways, um, what, uh, you messed me up with that SGAC now. Um, <laughs> talk to me about the games you guys played, or you all played there. It was actually almost entirely, like, PSP. So it was like, a lot of people are playing Daxter and like Monster Hunter. I wonder if I forget what the Monster Hunter PSP game was, but it was like Daxter. I remember it was one that a lot of people were playing in uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2, the PSP version. Oh my. Uh, what did you use to get the, like, to convince the school to give you sponsorship for that? All you had to do was get a teacher to agree to host it in their classroom and then sign off on like a weekly, like, like yes, the club met for X many hours this week um, and it would be officially sanctioned by the school. All right, there is your questioning to Zach about the SDAC or SADC. It was mm -hmm. one of those two. Uh, <laughs> Super and, uh, duper awesome club. SDAC. Got it. Yeah, SDAC. Stack. Stack. And uh, stack. stack, as stack they call it. Click. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This club is stacked. Uh, <laughs> and oh my. Uh, so that leaves Connor. Uh, Chris, are you ready to question Connor? Connor, you've been lying to me all day. I don't know if I can take any more. You've broken my heart. <laughs> my name's not even Connor, pal. You don't know what's real and what's not. <gasps> yeah. 60 I, seconds I on the clock. Was... Canoe. Ready, Let's go, set, canoe. Go. Tell me about this club that you formed. What is the name of said club? So it's going to sound dumb and made up. So bear with well. me. But it was called the A-Wing. Because so it's A W I I N G and the A wing was the musical and arts wing of our high school and between orchestra and marching band me and my friends would hang out and play Wii in the green room of the theater. Oh, that is so clever. I um, know. Well, so yeah, we wanted T-shirts and we found out all we had to do was register with the yearbook and then the school would pay for them. Uh, okay, so I guess I answered my second question. Um, what what games did you play? You already said the console. What games are you playing? So you may have, yeah. So we just played Wii because it was mine. Uh, and yeah, so this was like 2010 or so. So I guess Wii Fit had just come out, I think. So we played a ton of that. Mostly just the Hula Hoop game, but. Mm. All right, another another great name for a club he's making a face and is that legal making him uh the face i mean he can do whatever he wants he's he's losing so <laughs> whatever, whatever he wants to do. Uh, oh, uh, i i believe i am being dunked on <laughs> it might be i think i'm being dunked on yeah. um uh audience this is your last chance to change your votes or get your votes in um chris is there anyone you're fully not believing or anyone you're kind of floating between how you feeling well it's weird because everyone gave some pretty good answers uh like zach's answer on how to get sponsored for it is kind of exactly what we did it was just find a teacher who didn't really give too much of a damn to just sign the papers for you um the curiosity that i had though is that we weren't allowed to bring in consoles we had to play on pcs so i'm a little bit more believing of what john was saying but the uh, the A-Wing thing is too clever to have just thought up on the spot. Unless Connor is just a goddamn genius, which I believe. So Very stupid, Chris. <sighs> <laughs> All right, before we get your final answers, audience, we are now locking in your vote. You are locked in for the episode. Thank you very much for playing this episode. And uh, Chris, it's time to get the answer from you. Uh, this story, whose story is it? Who's telling the truth? Oh man, everything's on the line here. Everything is it's on the so line. So on the line. Audience, you and I, we need to get this wrong completely together. We could go down. <laughs> we together. need to go down together. We ride together, we die together. It's um, happened. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say. Uh, I'm gonna say it was Connor's story's truth. I'm locking it in, Jeremy. Locking in Connor as telling the truth um now that be that so, is locked so in bad. before we reveal uh let's see what the audience thought also went with connor ride together, die together babies okay let's ride go. together die. so you are either 
I mean, you both lose no matter what. But <laughs> <laughs> so we die together regardless. But but uh, you know, you either go down with zero points or you go down with one. What I want to say is, I'm very happy no one went with John because John, you said you're in middle school. The game's called High School Dilemma. It's all about <laughs> stuff in high school. Oh. <laughs> the... <laughs> I, I, you haven't, you haven't revealed who, can I, can I, can I, it can wasn't, I, it wasn't I, you, it wasn't, it wasn't me. <laughs> My story is a hundred percent true though. Like yeah. <laughs> everyone's like in chat, everyone chats like, no way in middle school, you have 30 computers. We had a 40 computer, yeah. computer lab and, yeah, and we just had a teacher that in there. He was just on his computer the whole time while we played Doom and Unreal Tournament, like giant FPS multiplayer games. Like, oh. No. What, what are people talking about? They're wearing computer labs. We have to reveal. We have to reveal. All right. So uh, the contestant in the audience have both gone with Connor. So one of two. We know one of two things is true. Either the A wing is the is the club, wing. or the uh, S D A C is the club, and uh, the the real club was the S D A C oh was real. Zach God. was telling the truth. <laughs> I told you, you gotta believe me. <laughs> the super duper awesome song. <laughs> the mirror's out again. <laughs> There's the smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> what are we looking at? Oh, wow, Connor. Wow. We're I'm, right I'm there. Lied and really good, of time. That's fantastic. So if I gave awards for just like supreme liar, it would have to go to Connor. Like, at a certain point, incredible. I was playing with fire. I didn't even need yeah. to keep lying. I was adding stuff in without being <laughs> Listen, if you didn't say that A-wing thing, I was like, I think Connor's tell is that they tell too much. And then you said this um, A-wing thing. And I'm like, yo, that is way clever. That is too clever to come up with on the spot. I am a student of Apparently the second not. city. I give you specifics say that, like but, it's my job. So good. Yeah, you say that Connor couldn't come with on the spot, but Connor also lied at the top of this show oh, about some local <laughs> broadcast celebrity. Like Connor, no, Connor's got okay. the game on point. That's true. So That's true. Barbara Jeep is a, a Philadelphia car dealership, but I've never seen him in an ad. <laughs> I don't know if there is Mr. Barbera. I don't know who that that's the best thing. Is. That's the how, that's how you lie. You tell part of it as the truth. Yeah, yeah. You you do little bits like what John was doing. Um, but that means that the deceivers get two points for that round. Uh, which means the deceivers end with five points. Almost a perfect game. Let's go. Um, zero. For we were the carried by Connor. Ended. We were carried by Connor. <laughs> which, which means at the end of this episode. Uh, both the audience and the contestant are going to be today's. There it is. Oh, the double, <laughs> the double, double, <laughs> double chump Kinos over here. <laughs> chump Kino. Yeah, you started with that. You're like, we're gonna, we're going in for chump Kinos tonight. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone, for joining for this one. Uh, thank you to all the deceivers. Thank you, Chris, and yeah, uh, thank you, me. audience, for tuning in. So we're back, and uh, we got another handful of episodes coming in before the end of the year so make sure you're back next week wednesday 5 p.m central time here on rt tv and make sure to uh just sign up make an account and you can uh play along as well uh we appreciate you have uh being here and we'll see you next week tune in for chump change become a first member watch it do Goodbye, it everybody bye see you later Thanks for watching, everybody, and make sure to let us know in the comments down below who managed to fool you. Make sure to tune in next week, Wednesday, 5 p.m. Central Time on RTTV so you can watch Chump live and play along in the chat. See you then. Bye.